Hello and welcome back for game two, where Golden Guardians will be facing off against the evilest of geniuses, Evil Geniuses Academy. Let's take a look at the starting rosters, selecting on the Azul side. It is Golden Guardians. That is top lane, Zion, Spartan, Jungling Heart, mid, Ablaze, Olive, Bot, Gorica, support, Huhi, Coach, Raz, and Spooks. Facing them on the red side, <coughs> excuse me, are the Evil Geniuses Academy. Top lane, Brandini, Jungle, Onda, Mid, five fire, bot definitely support Matt and Tim Kiro on stage. And, and it may have not been how they planned Spring Split to go, but the additions of Anda and five fire has paid off for Evil Geniuses as they celebrated their first win. Yep, Anda and five fire highlights. Let's get a look at them. They use Pantheon and Elise uh, in the mid lane, especially uh, Anda had some really good setups there yep. for him. Doing pretty good for himself. And a plan, Leeson, Leeson, and Elise, or rather Elise, I should say, not the previous ones. Those were Sven Scarin in the jungle since he had to come in and play. And then Five Fire coming out with his Pantheon yesterday, doing the initiations, didn't get any kills in his name, but he was able to pretty much facilitate what the team needed. You need somebody to go in there, like an Ole last game, and take those hits, take the failures, so everybody else can stand on a pedestal and look awesome. Sometimes you got to do that. That's, that's a support main. All right, support main right there on your screen, by the way. <laughs> Another LCS veteran made his way Matt. to Academy. Like oh. seeing Matt around. Yeah, so despite suffering a loss, a Blaze Olive, however, on the other side, had a monster of a game and will be a threat for five fire in this matchup. That's something you can be sure of. Yep, a Blaze Olive. He had that Baron uh, steal and the Dragon Soul steal. Big moves for him. It always feels really good, too, because he's not even the jungler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mid laner able to get uh, a lot of secures for himself. Every time you see him in the hallway, he's super positive as well. I love him. They were intense moments, too. He's doing a real good job. Uh, Gorica as well on that side, having a pretty good game for himself. But he was made to play that Soraka, so he's been kind of throwing his... Uh, uh, champion pool around left and right. You can see the Ablaze, Olive, and Gorica stats right there. See how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Doing pretty well, if uh, I say so myself. Hell yeah. 713 damage per minute, and even Gorica is a 507. So you can, not to say like one's behind the other, but just how far ahead that feels to be in mid lane. Zion Spartan as well. This man has been playing pretty well. Set 4-4-4. Four, four, and four. He had a pretty fun game on that. Has been to Mordekaiser and Aatrox. Is, everybody's kind of testing the waters here with the compositions they're running in the early part of the season. Don't want to set too much precedent. Unless you're Lorlo, then you play Aatrox. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And as you said, uh, Zion Spartan as well. Formerly Darshan and also <laughs> formerly Zion Spartan. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be called Zion Spartan. I still do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I used to too. They've been around for quite a while, and we were at, uh, me and somebody else, uh, one of the casters were having a discussion uh, recently, just kind of about like how a play style for a player will change, but the meta changes as well, and it's kind of like Darshan has always had his play style that has somewhat fit the metas. We've never really seen Darshan Jax back in the day and being able to do what he can do. That's when he was that all-star that we know of him. But now it's kind of like, oh yeah, Darshan Tank, and obviously he can do that. This guy's a pro. He's been in the scene for 10 plus years. This is definitely what you want in your team is kind of, you know you're never gonna lose the game from this guy and you can definitely win the game from this guy. I remember the Darshan Nasus split push oh. at the Nexus. That will always be my Zion Spartan image and memory. Riveting. <laughs> Watching paint dry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Until he got to the turrets. Until he got to the turrets. Then you're watching awesomeness. So we'll see Elise and Akali being locked out here for the bands to start things off. Obviously, Senna will be down there for now, even though we have some of the ADs and the LCS saying, oh, no, a sum up, double lift, saying that's not the one I want anymore. A lot still prioritize it. Yep, Rumble going to band away here. Uh, definitely super strong flex pick right now. i even seen a couple of junglers trying their hands at it, but that would definitely be way down the power list. Horn off the table as well. Not going to have that easy tank to rely on for Brandine. Lucian. We saw that in mid lane from Crown on Counter Logic Gaming as well. Could be going pretty much anywhere. And the Syndra gets locked in. No longer a human ward. Now back into the games as much as possible. Whether she's picked or banned, she will be picked this time though. So Blaze Olive is going to have some good control over mid lane. It's a, definitely a classic Blaze Olive champion, but blind picking the Syndra 
um, definitely leaving yourself open for some assassin counter picks to try and attack you. Just shows how confident he is on the oh. champion, though. Doesn't care if you're going to try and kill him in lane. Uh, he will take that fight. Now I'm looking for initiation from me, the geniuses, after this. Obviously not from maybe Anda, but... Ooh, an MF and a set. Interesting. I want to see your start alting and set just drop him off the ropes into bullet time. <laughs> Definitely a possibility. Yeah, it feels yeah. like uh, Evil Geniuses are trying to bait them into the um, Aphelios pick here. Not taking that one up, even with the Senna ban. Um, the other option is Varus. So it's either Aphelios or Varus here for Golden Guardians, uh, unless you're going to really hinder yourself. Yeah. It looks like they are going to be pushed into the Aphelios, a uh, little bit of bait. Do like the Misfortune uh, double up combo, and her extra speed goes a long way. Since you have a set for the top side, it's a very, very safe top side. Set has huge base uh, defenses and can regenerate very, very easily. The second part of the passive, lower you get, more regeneration you get even, so they can put more attention elsewhere on the map. Uh, set can be flexed to the jungle, by the way. I'm actually a pretty big fan of jungle set because with Ooh. a blue smite, it actually gives you more mobility than a normal set. Um, yeah, you usually have trouble getting in there. And it's been uh, very effective uh, thus far until we see the nerfs coming through. But with Jarvan lock in, that is going to all but secure the position of set as top lane. And Jarvan fares so well with the misfortune. Get everybody up in that Cataclysm Riv. Just try and group them up and burn them down with the bullet time. Like a fish in a barrel. Old strategies being brought out here. And what do these second phase bans have for the teams right now? It's going to be a Rek'Sai at hard. Where's hard been on usually? Lee Sin, Lee Sin, and Jarvan. So he's looking at the other play that he's had currently. The junglers always have a bit of a bigger champion pool. I mean, we saw Sven Skarin pulling out Kindred the other day in the LCS because that's what kind of he had been practicing. So you never, never know until they get locked in. Chatting from the coaches. LeBlanc. Get that assassination away from Five Fire. He did have the Pantheon. His predecessors played the Mordekaiser and Orn, and that was Brandini and Kumo that both took to the mid lane here for EG as they got some things sorted out in the first few weeks. And now, final seconds on EG's ban. Zebron. So we must get the Tom Kench now, right? I'm actually pretty surprised uh, EG didn't want to uh, pick either of those assassins into the Syndra like I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So Golden Guardians will be like, okay, well, if you're not going to try and kill us, then we'll ban them out. Go with something else there, buddy. Great protection for MF. I mean, Autolist. it's... Yeah, it's... Especially since the Aphelios was shown, so you know it's not a... It's not a roll swap Syndra. It's not going to be a bottom lane Syndra, but... All right, we'll see what they uh, end up with here after the bands come through. Nautilus picked up there for the bottom lane. Always great to have engaged onto Aphelios. You get your point and click, super long range Nautilus ultimate. That sets everything up here. EG have a very, very simple team fight. Everybody group up, wombo combo ultimate style set up for themselves. So that's what I expect them to bring from the mid lane as well. 10 seconds. We got who he. Who he wants to play the Thresh? Not a bad pickup. Keeps the Felio safe. That's actually something you need for him quite a bit. So hook versus hook on that bot side. Not as much shock and awe on the side of GG as it is kind of picking somebody off and hoping you can continue the fight out of that chaos. But if EG can get a hold of one of your members, bye-bye, especially with whatever they put into here, and it might just be a member that's sleeping on the job, and they do lock in the Zoe, that's going to be Five Fire in the mid lane. Ooh, so we got some synergy uh, here between Anda and Five Fire. We were talking about them a lot in the uh, intro. If you can get your Jarvan Cataclysm down, it actually extends the bubble range because it counts as terrain. Oh, snap. You get some nice uh, sleepy trouble. Woo. Not that you're going to miss it within like the next inch of Cataclysm, but <laughs> yeah. that's pretty sick. I like it. I never even considered and it. And it, it can also fill up the Cataclysm. So oh, like, you're in there, yeah. you dodge it around. <laughs> Whoa! Go to sleep. Yep. No way you're going to get out of that nightmare. 25 seconds on the clock. We do have two and one. Golden Guardians versus the one and two evil geniuses picking their win up against TSM yesterday in the fashion of an Elise in that jungle.
and a 5-0-2 Senna for Daffley. So really looking a lot of power in that lane. We talked about a Blaze, Blaze Olives game against the Mortals. Played it so well and even uh, in that un unfortunate loss. Was able to make big plays for his team and keep his head in the game. So you're always looking for power plays from him. The impact plays from the mid laner Golden Guardians. The coaches will shake and head off. They give their players their final words of wisdom. Maybe it's just like don't lose early game or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, we, I've, we had a couple check-ins with those like last minute ones and Sometimes it's reminders for stuff that they practice earlier. I personally like it when they uh, just give a quick reminder of what both compositions goals are early in this particular game with this draft. Yeah. Hey, try and look for that 2v2. You guys are gonna have priority here. Go, you know, uh, invade on late blue, that type of stuff. But sometimes it's just a, remember, brain on, don't int. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, I believe in you, Riv. I believe in you. I believe in you, Kobe. And our brains are on for game number two of Golden Guardians versus Evil Geniuses here for some Monday Night Academy League before Monday Night League, if you will, and then the Bud Light League Lounge. You know what? Monday is full of league, and that's all I love about it. I feel like my whole life is full of league. It has been for <laughs> that's some years the way now. I, that's yeah. the way I like it. Absolutely. It's going to be full of more league, probably another 30, 35 minute one. We'll, we'll guess that okay. going into this. And it just throws out the standard to keep himself safe and privy of any more knowledge than anyone walking through his jungle. Looks like they'll stay safe, though. Another line of scrimmage coming up. Nobody has too much of an early game advantage to start this one. Ah, little uh, level two red gank ward right here Maybe against the Jarvan. I like it. Trying to defend against those possible... I mean, people used to call it, quote-unquote, cheese. Cheese. But it's a very viable strategy, and... Yeah. It's just people who get surprised by stuff they're not expecting think that's not fair. But it's a strategy game, Riv. I think surprise is a very valuable tool. That's why yeah. I kind of always have a problem with people who go and, ah, you cheeser, going for a level two gig while I'm not ready for it. That's just dishonorable. I talked about that on Riot Report once. It was like, how, how long or how many years in a row do you call something cheese until you accept it was a strategy? You know, when chaos isn't chaos, but it's actually a strategy. It's pretty funny to think about and how many lines people cross or don't cross in that conversation. They are going to be starting on blue, though, as you did see that that ward going over to Anda, and they saw Jarvan topside to start, mm -hmm. checking his red, but also going to be seen once he heads over. Grom start after blue and over to the other side. And so I talked about this a lot when the jungle changes came through, but them buffing the experience of Gromp, making buff Gromp buff a viable level three rush. Oh, I think he showed. Yeah, for sure. But that's a big fight coming in. Conqueror on both sides. Low health means that's a hard fight. Yep, good escape there from Anda though. He, you could see him go to the other opposite side of hard, then flag and drag through Lee Sin to gain the full distance and get the knockup, make sure there's no possibility of Lee Sin chasing him down. Um, and with that time, hard is able to pull the red buff back, I believe. Uh, you can kind of see him hovering on the mini map. He's going back for it. Oh. I think something uh, unfortunate happened for hard, at least all the way back there, so. Patience ran out and it did heal back up, so he's taking a bit longer to take it, but it was still away in the end. <laughs> and the though is going to have the experience advantage because of the delay, because hard went red to red. Yeah. Oh, pulling him towards the side of the jungler. Five fire does not bite into that bait. And a blaze olive will just take a hit in the lane to force his potions out. Pretty aggressive moves. If I was hard there, that would have been me being like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I messed up. I can't believe Anda was just on the other side of the wall. So as Anda, what are you doing to scramble now? Are you trying to invade or are you just trying to clear what you can and be safe? Honestly, I don't think he's uh, he's too worried about it because he's Great. able to get the extra camp down. So he's farming up game with the extra experience. Yes, he doesn't have red buff for the early stages. You miss your regeneration oh, no. and you don't have your, your extra damage for your gank. But all being said and done, after the timeout here of the buff, uh, is still going to be ahead, and as you can see, because of the show there for hard, and is able to go in, you steal away the raptor camp. Yeah. By the way, always leave a small raptor or even a couple small raptors behind, like Anda is doing right now, because they took even more experience and gold out of the small ones and put it into the big one. So the small ones are really useless for you to take, and if you delay it, 
the respawn of the camp by yeah. leaving one behind, then you really do inflict that counter jungling deficit on your opponent. Uh, you should always leave small raptors uh, behind and a small wolf behind because they're so low value. With Krug, it's a little bit more annoying since you have to leave the kind of medium-sized Krug there, the secondary one. Mm. Um, and it does take time for the big one to split if you want to keep mining it. But I I would say it is also worth the trouble to delay the Krug spawn since, huh. you know, them, them being two minutes now very quickly, if you full clear on a counter jungle, it honestly half the time does nothing because the camp will just respawn in two minutes anyway, yeah. be there, and it'll be a higher average level for your opponent to take <laughs> anyways when they get back. So like, why are these so hard to fight right now? Yeah, if you're not uh, leaving the small one behind, then you're not actually counter jungling. The nuance is it's interesting. I remember I used to talk to Zyrene about jungling. He's like, dude, you need to clear your camps more because they come back up. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's just those little things. You're like, wait, that's my experience. I actually should be clearing them ASAP. And we get our first gank towards the bot lane just around 530. That took a little longer than expected with the aggressive junglers we have on the map, but it does not look like it will end here. Just a question mark to the left side of hard as this cannon wave starts to come out. I don't think it comes out far enough. They're in a pretty safe spot just behind that wall and try brush side. Brandini and Zion Spartan trading back and forth. Nice cue. He has to watch for that haymaker. He'll slam back with the face breaker. Yeah, Love actually, it. uh, oh, little dodge on the top side there. Here we're gonna have some vision though. And uh, might choose his moment. They're calling up the bottom lane. Bottom lane collapse for EG. On to hard. Throw a ward on that lantern. All right, so they get out safe. A little back and forth though. Both teams definitely ready to get a fight on early. I like this farming for Daphne though on that map. Gonna keep up and farm if Aphelios does, or Gorka rather, does not get back in time. He should be able to though. It's just right in the middle of the wave. All right, everybody around here for the bottom side rotation. Scuttlecrab taken, Ocean Drake started up. Can Hard get in there for the steal and then Thresh Lantern back out? Let's take a look. Well, we got pulled in closer. I thought that was gonna be helpful for yeah. him. But he is going to stay safe on that. Ocean Drake goes down. Good front lining there by Matt. <laughs> he knows what they're going for right here. And immediately, they call a stop to the play. That's a big nope. They just Thresh Lantern him right back out. Not going for that steal. Trying to get past the Nautilus is so difficult because there's so much crowd control in the Nautilus kit. Matt just lays down the auto attack. Yeah. He can hook you back. And by that time, not only do you not get the dragon, but you also lose your life. So. Good safe play there from Golden Guardians. Not want to risk too much for just an early ocean dragon. The individual effect of that dragon yeah. not going to be a big detriment. So here's a question. Do you have much of an opinion on the Deathly MF Doran Blade buys that we've kind of been seeing more and more? Let's take a look for a couple whiffs here first. Uh oh There's a hit. A whiff and a hit. They're definitely feeling the breeze on that one for Matt. That's going to be a few more attacks, and that is the first blood for Huhi. <laughs> It does look like that BF sword damage comes up a little bit better. Yeah, Garika actually flashed there to try and secure the last hit because <laughs> he saw that it was going to go to Huyi with the Ignite, uh, but not enough on it. A little bit too slow, not quite uh, communication there on burning it down. So the full money goes over to Huyi, but he still gets the assist money there for himself. Sorry. Flash blown, though, for Aphelios. Maybe we'll see a punish. Okay, Matt there, he was predicting a dodge up. Right. Uh, and because they do not dodge up, it looks really bad. And then there's also a good punish from Huhi. Uh, but that was why the hook missed so blindly there, because he was predicting that dodge up. It's hard to throw a hook at somebody when you've thrown years of hooks of prediction. You just, you hate it. It feels so bad to be like, they're gonna stand still, yeah. I can definitely tell where Matt's coming from on that. Like you said, makes it feel bad. Had great intentions in that play. One kill over for GG now. That is, as we said too, who he, Aphelios, gets a little bit of the beneficiary on that one. Picking up some cash. Skirmisher Saber finished up on both sides for Anda and Hard. Now we're gonna get those lane swaps out. We're just around that nine, eight minute mark, and they are gonna be now onto Rift Herald with that bottom side aggression going in their favor. This looks good for Golden Guardians to start things off. Yeah, Golden Guardians feeling real nice about the start of this one. Pick up the Rift Herald. There'll be an empowered recall here for Hard, and they have plenty of time 
Enthusiasm on the turret plates with the earlier spawns of Rift Herald. So keep your eyes on uh, on this duo up here because remember, a flash blown offensively is just as punishable as a defensive one. And Garika trying yeah. to use his flash to secure that last hit money uh, is an area that EG wanted to attack. and did step up there. Ooh, nice scatter. The tray back here on these power. Gonna get the heal out as well. But a Blaze Olive definitely playing that off of the ultimate spot that Five Fire had left behind. And we get now a fight in the bot side. Everybody's seeing a little bit of back and forth. Blood's in the water, and we just keep getting it in each lane. That one fizzles out as Brandini's staying pretty healthy, though. As you said, all that regen he gets when he's even lower. He's still able to chug pots, even if he's not. And now that he's got the Bramble Vest, he can try and cut down on some of the Zan Spartans healing in the Aatrox kit. A couple people converging around mid lane because of the little skirmish they had earlier. But since they both have flash up yeah. and a Blaze Olive also has cleanse, I don't see this resulting in, in too much action. Going back to Doran's Blades. We had a little fight there. I actually. I didn't like it at first oh, when yeah. I saw MFs doing this. I like it now because you you get movement speed off W. You're back in lane. You don't have to worry about boots that early as well. Probably free boots anyways because that's where you're going to be running secondary. And then you get to sell them later. Being tanky in lane never sucks as a marksman. Yeah. It just feels weird to not be crushing things down immediately until you get your BF sword. Who he looks like he may have been a bit early on this one, but Thresh can stay in the fight for quite a while. Holding everybody inside that box. Five fire now on the other side trying to route this in. They get that Cataclysm down where the ultimates to follow through, though. They do lose out onto hard. He had to flash in this Ooh. one. It still went down and just missing on the orb. Yes. Oh, flag and drags out. And that's going to be another hit in from who he, he goes down with the flash play. Keeps everybody in the fight. Now Gorka has to send him down, sever him on the offhand, and now main as he starts to dish out the name. Kill for him, and nobody wants the rest of what Aphelios has to bring once he gets there. Look at those blinking health bars there, Riv. A lot of escapes for EG. And uh, baits in the entire team. What an engage, and then escape there for Anda on the Jarvan. Let's take another look at how it started out. Who he here on the Thresh. Flash cones on over, trying to find him. He hooks him in because Hard is on the way and Ultimate goes down. They've got the early rotation from a place all of on the Syndra, which a really good MF Ultimate to buy time. You know, definitely with those Dorian blades has the extra attack damage. And then he kicks in Anda, but Hard doesn't have to stopwatch. Anda does, so he stopwatches, then flashes out. Barely doesn't die. Bates in a place. All of Splash on the Syndra, who immediately goes down. And then another bunch of stopwatches all over the place. <laughs> Saving lives. Oh, more fights. Five fire the mid lane. Getting lit up, man. Almost cooked up. He stays alive. Whew. So close to going down there. Had a, another heal, I believe, on him. And he gets to use that. Now they're pushing down towards Drake. This is going to be a mountain. And then we'll see what our next split is to change the map as the Drakes change. Wow. A lot of just back and forth is, is the team's test. Maybe these first item breaks, but also for the objectives, obviously. Yeah, and that's the difference there. You can see broken stopwatch. And they got to live. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh there for hard. That was a big difference in the top side play. As you're talking about though, Golden Guardians, they grab up that Mountain Drake. They start the Rift Herald on bottom side. They're going to cash in on these plates. So the objectives here paying oh, dividends. Oh. Get it down to two plates and you have that turret to your name. Man, that was close. Good thing to think about is you're getting through to make that super effective. Imagine if Golden Guardians was already moving to a different lane at this point. Instead, they have to push in one more wave. Not the worst. It looks like they won't even be able to get the turret on that one. So it sets the pace a little bit more to slow, slow mode, before we get too many big dives in. We do have definitely going from lane to lane, so it is five fire on the bot. There's a bit of change for EG and wanting to put their duo towards mid. Yeah, they got some decent amount of wards here that should see the approach. And now that we're into the mid stages of the game, Try and run through our hypothesis of how they're actually going to play this fight out. For Golden Guardians, you mentioned how low that turret is on bottom side. First turret bonus is still available. Uh, it's not as big of a deal as it has been in past right. years, of course. But it still should be a target uh, as the plates now fall off. And they can open up this entire dragon area of the map. Because Golden Guardians got that first Mountain Drake, 
Um, well, actually we're going to see a top side focus from EG. So they're powering ahead on through first. Will they go for a return here as Gorika and Puhi actually head out to try and defend? Let's see. Nimbus Cloak and Gathering Storm for Dafne. I was like, what are you running secondary with pressing attack? He's not getting boots, so it wasn't free boots. As we get a bit of a tussle in mid. Amanda and Five Fire are safe. Golden Guardians putting those three powerhouses together. Hard, Huhi, and a Blades Olive. Easily able to zero somebody out if they step too close. And you can see, ooh. Five, Blaze Olive is real quick on those scatters. Five Fire has to be careful. Zion Spartan now joins, and I think EG will feel a little bit less comfortable trying to taunt out a fight in this one. Already, we see Anda starting to push off. Definitely free farming on the top side, and so is Brandini on bot. Let's see if Golden Guardians can turn this into a Rift Herald. Yep, Rift Herald number two started up here. Teleport's available for Brandini. Yep. And there are plenty of wards here, too. Look at the minimap for him to teleport in on 4K health. They're going to fight it. Sleepy Bubble just misses Garika actually on the outside. He throws down ultimate and so does a Blazed Olive. Into the middle of the fight goes Brandini. Bullet time starts to shred the team of Golden Guardians. And who he is going to be the one in the eyes of three members of EG. Five fires just dueling with oh. two on the outside of this. And a double kill comes in for Deftly as he gets a big payout on this one for the Rift Herald fight. Yeah, another key scatter of the week from a Blazed Olive to delay it and make sure he doesn't go down also. But that engage from Brandini setting up Deathly's ultimate. You called in Champ Select Rib. That's what you are looking for. <laughs> the big AOE combo. They do get one off on the Rift Herald. And that means that first turret bonus barely does go over to the wow. evil geniuses. Even though Zion Spartan headed down bottom side to try and finish off that bottom turret. But he's it not going to get there again. in time. Let's take a look at it. Bubble landed. Uh, just behind Gorika, so it actually wasn't so a great close. start for them. And Anda getting hooked up and ulted with Syndra. They take that one full on. Straight up Brandini immediately after arriving from the teleport. Ults right in. They get the Wombo combo. None of them right over it. They don't even need the Jarvan Cataclysm <laughs> because Set just gets right in there. You get that big old slow for, uh, for Deathly, and he's able to cash in. That's now four kills for your MF Riv. So you can start selling off those pitiful Doran blades and start replacing yeah. them with BF sword items. There it is, return on investment. <laughs> Doran knew what he was doing. Perfect price, the resale value, you're in there. Feeling good at four, zero, and one. Redemption as we look over to a few finished items for Golden Guardians, finished up for Huhi, keeping the fights a little bit longer. They do stay in one spot. Gonna be good to get that reset in. Ludens finished up for a blaze. Just a few kills around to keep them in, but they'll be looking for definitely when that person have four has four kills. That's the bounty you want in your hands. Brandini cleans up top side. He has the Bramble Vest on him now, so Zion Spartan's gonna have trouble really getting into those fights and getting the resource and healing he wants out of it. And the chase around for Infernal. Let's go. And it plays. There is a teleport from Zion, and there is a ward behind the pit here, but I doubt they would want to fight it. We've already seen the Wombo combo in action. Yeah. They have their ultimates ready. Even if they don't have one of the initiation parts of it, the Cataclysm from Anda, they still are able to get a giant chunk and explode Golden Guardian. So they're done fighting that grouped up objective. Zion Spartan will get the top tower. Try and have that Aatrox split a little bit, open up the map for themselves. Yeah. They get some gold back in payment for this Infernal. And since there's still two more to go before our soul actually becomes a problem, they're willing to give that up for some money now so they can try and fight next. Oh, five fire caught up. That was a Calibra ultimate, I believe. So when he gets a few shots off, oh, Zion's part and says, don't worry, I got this one. Turret or not, we're gonna grab it. And Golden Guardians actually gets the map pretty scattered in a situation for Evil Geniuses. They're not gonna be able to get too much in the mid lane. Actually, less scattered than I thought. EG quickly converges on mid with those Moby boots. Matt's able to get there real fast and start a fight of their own. Bullet time is going to be up, but not there just Ooh. yet and used a little too late. That's EG now backing off as they thought they had the initiation with Matt. Now that he's down, that mid turret could follow. Yeah, that's a big whiff on the MF Ultimate too with 
All those gone, they're pushing on the turret. Zion Spartan already used his all. They are completely flexing to take this one down, and EG cannot do much about it. Very big counterattack there from the Golden Guardians. Going right ahead with a couple of picks. And remember, it all started with a push on the top side from Zion Spartan. Then he rotates on down to mid lane, and they get that dive. Yep. Using that pressure, there's a full reset there for half the members of EG. Using that really good timing window and the extra pressure to get multiple objectives back for themselves. Even though the Infernal Drake went over to EG, a lot of gold gain for the Guardians. A uh, ping immediately onto Baron. I think that was just a, hey, this is coming up. Get where you are and situate yourself in the game and be ready for it. I don't think they're going to do it right away. This is a scary, scary team to do it, especially if a Blaze Owl can take out one of your teammates. So it looks like EG gets the lanes pushed up to where they feel comfortable. You see a Blaze Olive taking care of that on the top side as he prunes that minion wave coming across river now. And Zion will start to head up for the time being. Probably just a ward and get that uh, resource down of Scuttle Crab if it is up. All right, Ping's going down already. Brandini doesn't have flash on set, but he's threatening coming up the river. And everybody kind of defending decently. So they're just going to have a little bit of a push on the bottom side. Tower's pretty low. I don't think he wants to extend too much of it, especially with Baron uh, threat being up here. Have to worry about keeping vision in this area. You can already see Golden Guardians, who he laying the groundwork for himself. He's got the advanced wards to look for those hook picks. And they've already cleared out the Baron pit. Got to keep definitely safe. First two games for Deathly, zero kills for himself with four deaths. Now he switched it around. Last game was 5-0-2. Now he's 4-0-1. Even has a 40 CS lead on his lane. You can see that MF lane bully coming to fruition for him. And now they have to be able to use it. Pushing out a Gorka. Now able to push out the fights. Just has to hit the ultimate. Mm -hmm. Bullet time has to be hey. a good time. It can be a bad time. And we just saw that. Yeah, that's all about the setup, too. Because uh, Matt went down, they didn't have the uh, Cataclysm there or set there. Yeah. yeah. You really need those pieces for this comp to actually synergize. Everybody has to be in place to fight the front to back, mm. uh, group them up with your CC. Then you get the big payoff with the Misfortune Ultimate. And I, like you're talking about, the, a lot of the lane bully from MF comes from Paying money for Doran's blades, like those, that, the sell back on them costs you money uh, for that early lane power. So uh, definitely that investment. The Infinity Edge Essence Reaver Spike though is definitely huge for flat damage. That's the way I like to play AD carries. I'm not not as big on the attack speed, super quick yeah. uh, auto placement movement. I'm more of a big, <laughs> big one shot. I want this first get a big bullet. Crit, yeah. Get some cooldown reduction. Big ultimates come through. Flat big, attack big damage. Player. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm definitely a big chin player. Flat attack damage. Here we go. Oh, right on the five bar. Kicks him in. He doesn't have much way to get out of this one. And they're going to be right back onto him. Nicely done by Hard. He does go down. The retribution huh. kill is there for his teammates. Definitely picks up one more for himself as the fight semi resets. They're looking at Zion Spartan on World Ender to be the next one in. Who he's got a hook, but so does Matt. Both teams have a way to get a target out of position. Over the wall, though, that's going to affect Juhi a little bit more. Matt has to get that terrain out of his way. And now Zion Spartan takes a big of a hit on that one. Nice bullet time. Oh, my God. That was huge by Deftly. Takes almost Gorka and Hoohee down. And they are going to have to reconsider the fight as Brandini stepped forward too far. A big hit from Anda coming on the Cataclysm. And Showstopper from Band Brandini. The kind of shocking all the damage down on to the health bars of Golden Guardians. Now we set up around fourth Drake of the game. Yep, round two, Riv. We got Lee Sin on the minimap. You can see him heading here. So as soon as Hard gets to the dragon, they're looking to finish it off, burning it down already because Matt and Andar are so low. Zoe's coming out of the base as well. Five Fire could have that range to participate. They root up onto a Blaze Olive. They take him down. Matt stays alive. 1400 oh, on the Drake. Hard has to leave. And Zion Spartan is not in the fight either. Soul Point coming in now for evil geniuses on Infernal. Yeah, Golden Guardians try and force on the objective, but EG take the fight first. When it's these low health fights around these dragons, highly recommend looking for fight first, trying to chunk them out. And that's exactly what EG do. They kill off the Syndra, a Blaze Olive goes down, means they can reap the 
rewards of the objectives afterwards. That's Infernal Drake number two. Mid tower outer. Ooh. Brandini also gets bottom outer tower and a huge influx. Here it is again. So my hug was because Hard went for the ward hop kickback at the same time who he went for the hook. And who he doesn't get the hook is a little bit out of range. Yeah. Hard also goes down in exchange. Um, that is a jungler for a mid laner though. So at a one for one, you take those jungler for mid laners and then they get the hook on the anda. They get a big chunk for themselves, but it also results in a decent amount of grouping here. Hoohi and Gorika right next to each other in placement for a really good ult from Deathly, who also saves Matt's life, by the way. So Deathly gets the huge chunk, then saves the support life with his heal. Then they find the re-engage. And uh, re-enters the fight with the flash on Jarvan, finds the Cataclysm, as you know, setting it up. But here we go, the aftermath down, Spartan flanking around. All right. They get his World Ender out, and though EG would probably love to leave this fight, Showstopper to the back to try and separate Zion Spartan from his team, but they're just too close. Golden Guardians is ready to react on this one. The rebuttal, however, again from EG. It's a back and forth. Everybody's trying to reset after these hooks and then find the better hook. There is the fish in a barrel. Can definitely open up. Ultimate's already down, unfortunately, but they are going to be able to get both kills of both fish in that barrel. Nicely that's done. That's got to be Baron. Clean up another one. Yeah, that's got to be Baron. Barrel of Barons here now. <laughs> Panda and crew gonna head right up. They actually could even uh, push while they do it. Everybody gonna go on over. 20 seconds on everybody's death timer. Teleport not available for Zion Spartan once he gets back up either. So that means there should be no surprise. Abelios ult is down. No possibility of a steal. EG will be able to march towards the base wearing purple. more. Matt is a tanky Baron. Able to grab it. Beautifully done by EG here to kind of set this game up in their favor, knowing that, hey, let's get Zion's ult out. Take that down, and the fights they're winning are kind of in their favor from the beginning. They never have to react. They're always the one pushing, pushing the envelope. Top side, Five Fires able to snipe down Zion Spartan. Bottom side, they finish off the extra kill on Thresh as well, and then Flashes forward. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see him do that, but I love the audacity. <laughs> Eight kills, rip for Deathly, by the way, That's on this gross. misfortune. That is one fed misfortune. He's also spent his money wisely on some defense. You can see that there was a quick silver sash in inventory. Uh, so in addition to having the big crits with his Ooh. long range rapid fire auto, and long range ultimate, he can stay safe there, even if he gets hit with one of the stuns from Misfortune. Quick silver sash is there to save him, and should mean that EG are able to make very good use of this Baron power play, select a lot of the extra gold in the secondary tower. So he could just rotate right over to mid, no slowing down there on the top side, and this will be at least two coming through. Who he's looking for a hook, though. Oh, that would have been nice. It only pops the Banshee's Veil, but I like the looks of who he is given with the fresh hooks. An easy in and out for Evil Geniuses. They have a bit of pruning to do on that bot side wave, but they'll lose a bit of map control if they go all the way down there to get it. So they're gonna keep some mid, keep pushing this up, and make sure this Baron is used efficiently. What's in the bubble? Heal. Ugh, so many summoner spells to watch for her. So yeah, there's a heal there. One's used just to get forward. Karika feels the power of that one. And there's just so much utility she can use to catch you off guard. Setting up on the right side, EG knows the amount of fog of war they're working with right now, and it's a possible hook, a possible hit from Anda. They decide to back out, though, as they can put protection in there now for Brandini to start pushing the bot lane in. Yeah, he's doing just that while they wait. Hard Whoa. tries to force it. Hard is going down. That was a hell of a fly in from Hard. I don't know even where it came from on the top side of the map. A blaze olive goes on to Zanya. Zion Spartan is trying to world ender on the evil geniuses, and I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, there's so much gold in the bounty to go down, and Zion does pick it up. Is it going to be enough, though, as he puts that in the bank? 
Stays alive for now, does get that passive healing on. Watch more. And you can see him running around. Showstopper goes in. There's only going to be a bit of damage to Gorka there. He throws down the Crescendum, pulls out Calibrum, hopes to do the damage, and he gets the Crescendum back out again. Just chuck him, chuck him the chuckrums. Almost gets the kills, but he's not able to do it. <laughs> Brandini coming up with that one as who he. There he goes, the super soaker, as he squirts him down from Five Fire. What a fight. I enjoyed that way too much. <laughs> Chuckin' the chuck rooms! <laughs> it's a really good fight! That's exactly how you use that weapon, by the way. Mm -hmm. All right. Get him close and let him loose. Keep on chucking them chuck rooms. Infernal Dragon gonna go down without so much as a peek from Golden Guardians. Hard is alive, but it would be too difficult trying to run past Zoe for that crazy steal, and that will be a soul burning up the rift here for evil geniuses. He still has a bounty after being taken down. He's a big man down there. Definitely nine, one, and four. You're right, they do get the soul. And we'll see how this one happened again. Oh my Woo! god, Art just flies in there. Man, Lee Sin looks so cool, but then dies so <laughs> fast. <laughs> it happened uh, happened a bit earlier too when he went for the one uh, kick back there onto uh, yep. uh, Zoe. And he just immediately goes down. Still looks so cool. That was actually satisfying to see the last Aatrox Q finish off that AD carry rave. You know that struggle and he's trying to get that last One hit. more. He did get him in the end though. It is Brandini coming in with the showstopper. So 4v3 just reinforces the engage. And since they've already got the gold lead, <laughs> just comes down to Go Rika. Trying to chuck them, chuck them, stay alive. Can't quite do it. Brandini just punches him in the noggin. Finishes off that kill. And you do know. So uh, we were actually looking up chakrams. And even though I've grown up, in every game, and I always hear everyone call them chakrams. Yeah. It's actually pronounced chakrams. Chakrams. Or uh, that's not exactly correct because I don't speak it perfectly, but it's much more of a chak chakram yeah. than it is chakram. So that's why it was so much more funny. To me. Here we go. This <laughs> brawl at the healer. They ain't gonna get it. Oh! Flash forward. Not even the dark passage can bring him to the light. Is who he tries his damnedest. I mean, you're not even really going to be down by your bot lane or your top laner when they're solo splitting, but the fact that he almost got there, kudos. Kudos. 266 on that CS line for the top laner is everybody's getting pretty full on the resources here. It's coming down to how fast you can click those buttons. Now, perfectly, a lot of summoners are down on both sides. Who he does have the initiation summoners up. So if he can get in there, maybe Anda stop him from getting out. Five Fire's Banshee's Veil makes them a bit harder, but they have so many things to think about as their base is falling from multiple directions right now on the side of Golden Guardians. Yep, no reason for EG to stop. They're already inside the base. Inhibitor number two goes down. Inhibitor tower goes down on the bottom side for Brandini as well. And they should be able to close the loop. Oh, they actually call it off because Baron is spawning. Wee woo, wee woo, Baron alert. Yep. Teleport up there for Zion. See if he can do it. Like a true Spartan versus all of EG. Isn't that how it works? Yeah. Hold, uh, you need a small passageway. I think that, that was part of the myth. We got, oh! Well, let's see, they are in a small passageway right now. Zion Spartan is running from far away though. He's still in town. He got the message late. He's coming. Well, he only needs to be around Baron, so he's good. 33 minutes and they're gonna start walking towards him. There's not much vision for EG up here to start things off. So a blast going over the wall means Zion can easily get in with the flanks he's been looking for. Time is not on the side of the Golden Guardians either because those super minions are headed straight for the Nexus Tower. So EG can just sit back and let the minions do their work. No reason to rush the Baron. You just wait for Golden Guardians to show inside their base. Syndra's trying to clear the supers. You see Hard all the way over there. Now you can rotate through, pick up the Baron easy as you like. No risk had. Nicely done. Waltzing around the map like they own it in full. Evil geniuses take Baron and now will have advantage over each of the lanes they want to send someone down. Brandini could easily get split on. It looks like bottom is the word currently. And that's where everybody's going to head as we get a push mid from Brandini. Let's watch some of Helios gameplay here as well with the uh, Hurricane. Well, Gravitum is kind of the gun you almost get rid of your ammo the quickest on. Mm -hmm. I think it's my favorite to fight. Like, 
Oh yeah, because the the, fun, the yeah. sound does feel like you get you get some good reverberation. Yeah, with it. exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, Krug gonna go down to hard. Golden Krug needs to be able to get some of that jungle monster efficiency done there first. Oh, Super Minions still on the top side of the map. So here we go. There's only one lane left, Riv, and it's straight through bottom here. Two shots left on this tower. Definitely one. Oh. And Cannon gets number two. That's a hell of a cannon down there. He's taken after Deathly in this game. As we see the map opened up here. This would be like the Bud Light blimp view. If yeah, you will. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Taking a look at the blue blue now, you can see minions starting to flood into the They're all buffed up by the bear. Minions here, even units surrounded. All of Golden Guardians at their Nexus turrets, and they're going win down, Rip. Got him out of a job now. First Nexus turret's going down. The second one will follow quickly after. Ooh. They're trying to TP to the minions, so you can't even get in. Off the ropes, onto Gorica Brandini. Slams him down with a showstopper. I think they'll be able to reach the briefcase first, too. Throw him out of the cage. Whatever have you, there's so many of them. Triple kill coming in for five fire. That's gonna feel good. Everybody on EG feeling really great about the KDAs. The win and the Nexus going down in favor of EG this game to bring themselves to two and two. Big win there for EG. Delivering the loss to Golden Guardians, tying them up at two and two in the standings now. And then, man, definitely with that misfortune. Yikes. Fortune Getting for the team. A misfortune for Golden Guardians. Ooh. Hey, we're in there. Wordplay. I think it actually, it took time to turn on. Their team was not full and complete within the first few weeks, or first week of Dignitas and 100 Thieves, right? We had Sven Skarin, Kumo, and Brandini switching and playing different spots. Yesterday. Yeah, get those LCS players out of here, man. <laughs> or previously, <laughs> to the start this week, they have TSM with the full team. 502 from Deftly, 303 from Anda. Everybody else participating in the fights, but those guys getting the kill, getting the resources, and again we see a similar type of play style from Evil Geniuses. Yeah, especially liked the uh, the re-engage earlier from EG when Brandini gets his teleport off. Um, even though they just lost mm -hmm. Anda in the 4v5, they know the cooldowns are not there. Syndra ultimate was used. All the crowd control was just used. So he gets right in there with the showstopper, groups him up for that big MF ultimate, and is kind of snowballing off a lot of these uh, early AOE kills that Deathly was able to get. Once he ended up there with like six, seven, uh, <laughs> the ultimates were just too much to handle. So really nice usage there for EG, playing to their comp. I like the combos they had, the options they had, and overall, they had a way to pick the fights. We've seen set compositions come out with no way uh, unless set would allow the other team to walk to him. And the other team's not just going to walk at you. So having the Jarvan, having the Zoe to set things up really allowed, I think, Evil Geniuses to make it work and good play all around, obviously, as we go back through some of these replays. This one was clean from Anda, by the way. So this is a MF ultimate that forces the disengage. Anda goes right back in there, and even though he gets kicked in, saves his flash. He stopwatches first, flashes away, and... Because he's so low, it baits in a blaze all of the Syndra flash is down. The mid laner killed off by Deathly. These are two of the early kills that he got that funded a lot of uh, the extra BF swords that he was able to get. And it was from both sides that we had good and bad ultimates. The next one we see EG lose an initiation with what kind of could be relayed ah. as a bullet crime. <laughs> So this, yeah, and this one is because, uh, well, actually, this one is a dive onto Five Fire that we've queued up here. That was Golden Guardians bringing the pain to the mid lane, just beating up Zoe. Actually, a lot of people kind of annoyed with that champion, so sometimes it's cathartic to see uh, true. Zoe go down. True. Here we go. There's your part you're talking about. Matt goes in on the Nautilus, and when he ults, uh, they think that they're going to be able to set it up, but he dies immediately, so that's why you got to cancel the ultimate because the disengage was there, not enough of the other parts of the CC. Yeah. Jarvan ultimate uh, wasn't there to keep him in place. Set wasn't behind him uh, to try and keep them in place for the damage to come through. So either. when you look at your mark, when you say, you got a flash, bro, good job. Yeah. <laughs> EG fight before the dragon here. We'll see this one once again. All right. Infernal Dragon was started. Oh, this was the rush where they had Hard coming back to the Infernal Drake, but the timing just a bit off. Anda got there in time, and they forced the kill onto Syndra. Matt got the hook, set him up, definitely brought the damage. They got Infernal Drake 
The extra kill off that and two towers in the aftermath. Yeah, that was when they were finally able to pick up bottom. We were saying, he, Brandy, he's going to play this one slow, paid off. They really got a big return on investment once they were able to scoop up all that standing gold. The next replay, the four for one for Evil Geniuses at 29 minutes. It all seemed to be coming to a head, and EG was ready for this fight. Yeah, EG tries to force it because they see Brandini bottom side, but hard. Uh, he travels all the way across the screen, gets blown up quick. And then even though it started as a 4v5, it quickly becomes everybody dead for uh, the side of Golden Guardians because Brandini walks his way up. You can see on the mini-map, uh, Set's going to come in for the re-engage. As soon as he gets there, Showstopper gets the slow. Zion Spartan gets taken out on the outside. Matt gets another hook. Five fire finishes him off. And Gorika tries to fight his way out uh, of this dangerous situation. Almost pulls it off with those chakrams. Super but soaker. Not going to be enough. Nice kill. I, I love it. Actually, the chase downs in these are really hard once you have a Zoe and MF and a bunch of people chasing you. And obviously, the final Nexus fight that rounded out this game. EG was just having a field day. Boom. Goes in, tries Boom. to get a kickback. At this point, you know it's doomed. Trying to get some KDA here. Get somebody down. They're going for definitely. Got a big dunk. No. Can't finish him off. What a great game for Evil Geniuses. Everybody's going to come out with a smile on this one, especially the fans. And it's got to feel good to know that writing the roster also helped them to kind of write a few of the situations, the communication they had in game with were or were with those previous players. So it's nice to see that they can get it all on paper and the rift. We're taking another break, but when we return, we come back with TSM and CLG's Academy squad taking to the stage. Do not go anywhere. I'm watching. They're definitely feeling the breeze on that one for Matt. That's going to be a few more attacks, and that is the first blood for who he. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. We still win, we still win. Oh. It's it's all, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let me get this guy too. Again. Showstopper goes in. There's only going to be a bit of damage to Gorka there. He throws down the crescendum, pulls out Calibrum, hopes to do the damage, and he gets the crescendum back out again. Just chuck him, chuck in the chuck rooms. Here we go. This <laughs> brawl at the healer. They ain't going to get it. Oh! Brandini slams him down with a showstopper. I think they'll be able to reach the briefcase first, too. Throw him out of the cage. Whatever have you, there's so many of them. Triple kill coming in for five fire. That's going to feel good. 